Hi everyone, this is Daniel from SciTech. Today we're going to have a look at how to terminate coaxial cable with an F connector. First we need to prepare the cable for termination and for this you're going to need a cable stripper. You'll need to set the depths of the cutting blades on the cable stripper and this will vary depending on what type of cable you're using. Whether you're using RG6 tri-shield, RG6 quad shield or even RG11. Next, you'll need to strip the cable. Run it so that the uh, end of the cable runs about flush with the edge of the uh, st cable stripper. Turn it around a few times and you'll feel it uh, get loose. And then pull it off. Okay, so to have a look at the cable up close now that I've uh, stripped it, uh, you'll see that there's an inner conductor uh, you've got a white dielectric around the conductor. Around the dielectric um, there's the shielding which consists of foil and braid. Um, you can just see the foil on the outside here. And then there's the uh, cable jacket. Now because this is tri-shield cable, on the outside of the uh, dielectric you'll have um, some foil then some braid and then on the outside as you can see here some uh, foil again. So when after we've terminated the cable we really want to take off that layer of foil and the edge of the foil is just here so we'll pull the foil off. Uh, it's usually pretty easy just to peel off like that. So there's the outer layer of, uh, of foil and then underneath uh, you've got the braiding. So when you're terminating a connector you need to make sure that all those braids are pulled back. And there we go. So now that cable is ready for um, to put an F connector on it, but just before we do, we want to make sure that uh, none of the braid has wrapped itself around the uh, center conductor and that uh, the cutters haven't cut into the shielding, nor the cutters have cut into the uh, center conductor. Uh, next, I want to show you what it looks like to strip quad shield cable. So I've got some quad here, I'll just strip it using the uh, cable stripper. And because it's quad shield now, you'll notice that the uh, shielding's a bit different. Um, working on top of the dielectric on quad shield, you've got foil, then braid, then foil, then braid. So that's why when we've removed the jacket, you can now see foil. Uh, so my apologies, you can now see braid as opposed to the tri-shield cable where we saw foil. So for quad shield uh, you just pull the braid back and that will reveal some foil and then you just uh, once you've pulled back the outer braid um, you'll find the the foil so this is actually the second layer of foil and you just pull that one out and actually pull back the first layer of braid as well. So now you've got two layers of braid pulled back And there you go, there's some uh, quad shield cable ready for termination. Here's an example of what it looks like when the cutter blades are set too deep. As you can see here, the uh, blades have actually cut the cable too deep, so the first blade is cut through the uh, braid, through the foil and even through the dielectric and the second blade has actually cut into the center conductor so this is no good. Once you've stripped your cable you now need to put on your F connector but you need to make sure to choose the right F connector for your application. Here at SciTech we carry a wide range depending on your cable type or the type of connector itself. So we do some screw-on connectors, uh, we do a crimp style connector and some compression style connectors. Um, and then we do them for RG59, for RG6 tri and quad shield and for RG11. Okay so for a screw-on connector 
you simply uh, grab the connector, ensure your cable is properly properly uh, stripped and pop the connector and just screw it straight over the top. So you put it straight over the braid and straight over the jacket. Uh, keep screwing until when you look inside the connector you can see, I'm not sure how well that looks on camera, that the inner dielectric runs flush with the face, the inner face so that's inside the uh, threaded section there, um, runs flat with the uh, with the connector so we've still got a little bit to go there and there you go so now the um, inside of the connector uh, the inside of the cable is almost running flush with the connector and the connectors on in fact that uh, F connect that uh, conductor is running a bit long there so we'd probably trim that off to about one and a half to two and a half millimeters beyond uh, beyond the end of the connector okay for a crimp connector same sort of story make sure your uh, cable is correctly stripped uh, grab your connector push it on over the, uh, the cable keep pushing it until the inside runs about flush with the inside of the connector so there again the dielectric is now in line with the inside of the connector and then grab a uh, hex crimp gun and just cr uh, crimp the uh, barrel of the connector like that again that's a bit long so you can probably trim that off and there you go that's how you uh, apply a crimp And finally, let's have a look at a uh, compression connector. So just like the others, make sure your cable is uh, correctly stripped. Pop the uh, F connector over the end. And keep pushing until it runs flush with the inside of the connector. Now that's a PCT compression connector. So I'm gonna use a PCT all-in-one compression tool um, to compress this. So you simply open that up, pop the connector in there, close it. Yeah and compress. And finally I'll just trim the uh, inner conductor off a little bit and there you go that's how you uh, do a compression connector. Okay finally once you've uh, finished your connections just ensure that um, all the connections look pretty good make sure that there's no braid or um, foil wrapped around the inner conductor or no um, no part of the inner conductor is touching the connector um, and finally you just want to check your continuity you can use a um, one of these a cable tester so screw one in at one end one on the other you get a beep and a red light that shows that cables okay you can also check your connection using a regular multimeter so I'll turn this multimeter to the continuity part there and uh, so if you put the two together you get an audio beep to indicate continuity so I'll just check for a short between the inner conductor and the connector itself so there's no noise so there's no short between um, the inner conductor and the connector which is a good thing and finally you can check the conductor to conductor so they have continuity and between the connector and connector. So that's a good bit of cable.